Hello, and welcome to Dairy of a Mad Cow. Today, we're continuing where we left off with Kerbal Space Program. We have a new mission where we are going to be landing Jebediah Kerman on the moon, or MUN. So, here's our rocket. A um, bit over-engineered, uh, brought way too much fuel with me, but that's a good thing, because if you're watching this video to learn how to land on the moon, it's likely you're a new player to this game, and having lots and lots of fuel is very good. So if you wish to emulate my design, go ahead. As we go through the video, I'll probably talk about some things that I think could have been done differently with it, um, just in case you want to improve upon what I've built. Now, what you saw was the entire stage that got me there. That's what left the launch pad. So anyway, here we are. We're in orbit around the moon, and we're just going to be reeling in our orbit to bring our periapsis in to intersect the moon. Now, we're going to make sure that we want to land on the light side of the moon, because if you try to land on the dark side, you ain't going to be able to see shit, and you're likely going to crash into the surface really hard, unless, of course, you're using some modded parts like spotlights or mech jeb, which can tell you exactly how close to the surface you are, provided you still want to land manually with mech jeb. Which, if you uh, want to learn some finer points of flying and orbit and all that, mech jeb's pretty good. Just, you know, run it, see what it does, watch it, and then emulate it when you're flying manually. Learned a lot that way. Anyway, we'll go ahead and descent. Now, we've got a little bit of fuel left in these big-ass engines, so once we get down a little bit, we're going to uh, fire them. Now, right here, we're going to see a little bit of a time warp glitch when going into the mun. It's right here. The video has frozen, and uh, it jumped us down a little bit. This has hap been happening since earlier versions of the game. It's extremely annoying, and has caused me to crash several rockets. But, thankfully, I have brought a shit ton of fuel with an outer stage with a shit ton of thrust. So, let's uh, get this baby oriented. Now we're going to have to... Uh, have a little bit of trouble here, because it's a big-ass ship, so we're gonna, we had to use the engines to get us going. And it looks like we're going uh, retrograde here, so we're just going to burn and slow down. Now watch that orbital velocity, because you don't want to slow down too much and kick yourself back into gaining speed. Okay, so we're out of fuel. We'll just go ahead and eject that. Now, I thought I could time warp here, but apparently those pieces are pretty damn heavy and they're falling with me. So we're just going to kick on the engine and uh, just put slow ourselves down a little more so we can get away from those things. We don't want them interfering with our descent. And there we go, we're moving. Now we're just gonna slow down. Now this stage I made primarily for the purpose of traveling to the moon should we run out of those big boosters or, uh, you know, just basically for slowing down to save fuel in the lander and return stage, which is the same stage, more or less. Now, I put 2.5 fuel tanks on it. Um, might have been too much. Probably could have got away with one and a half, or just two. But uh, it works. We are going to have to jettison it with some fuel left in it, because it doesn't have any gear on the bottom to land, and if we try to touch down with that, it's extremely likely we'll just tip over, break our rocket, and be stranded, and we don't want that. We're just going to make sure we're staying pointed retrograde. We want to make sure that that uh, marker is as close to the center as possible to minimize our horizontal movement. Because if you have any horizontal movement when you're landing, it's very likely that you're going to break your lander legs, or tip over, or explode, or any other assortment of problems. Huh, it's weird. One of my ladders has broken off. That's... huh. How did that happen? Oh, well, we're not going to deal with that. We've got the EVA packs. We can just, uh, fly off the top of this ship and fly back up with it. We'll be going into EVA packs once we're on the surface. Now, it's a bit of a slow descent. I'm not one of those people who's going to do a suicide break where you descend down to the last minute and fire everything at the last possible minute and get yourself slowed down and then touch down gently. I'm pretty decent at landing in this game, but I'm not that good. To do things like that, I'd recommend that, unless you're an absolute pro, you use an autopilot mod like MechJeb. If you're not using an autopilot mod, just bring a little extra fuel along just to help yourself slow down. Now what we're doing here, we're just going to slow ourselves down, and you can see when we start to slow down, the retrograde marker on our nav ball will start to wander a little bit, and as we gain speed when we kill the engines and start falling again, it'll wander back closer to center. So 
that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with when we get going really slow in the landing process. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. We're just going to fall a little bit more and try to burn off a little bit more of this fuel once we picked up some, some more speed. There we go. Just going to put it at the full thrust, watch the uh, speed drop. You can see our retrograde marker is wandering a little bit. You could try to point the ship towards it, but with that minute amount of movement, we're not going to worry about it too much. We'll, it'll come back as we're falling, as you'll see. Also, in this landing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recover from a mistake should you screw up and cause your retrograde marker to move way too much, causing you to have to try to either land at a very dangerous angle while you reel it in, and uh, we're just going to show you how to recover from that so that you don't have to make an extremely dangerous landing which will likely result in a crash. So it looks like it's not reeling in all the way, so we're just going to try to burn towards it, which might bring it in a little bit. Looks like it's doing something. Yeah. When your uh, retrograde marker is not on the center of the nav ball, as I said earlier, you are having horizontal speed. The closer it is to the horizon, the faster your horizontal speed will be. So there you can go. We see we've uh, reeled it back in. And I might want to consider dropping the stage as we are getting pretty close to the surface. Just time warp a little bit, see if we can... Uh, Find an excuse to burn off a little bit more of this excess fuel we brought with us. Okay. It's getting a little hairy with it. Let's just kill off what we can, and then we'll drop this stage. Okay, there goes the stage. We're getting pretty close. Now, when landing on the Mon, I'd like to point out that just because the altitude says 42,000 meters does not mean you're actually 42,000 meters above the ground. You're just uh, 42,000 meters above the lowest point on the Mon, or the Mon's sea level. So you could have the mountains go up as high as 2,000. So we're just going to go ahead, find out uh, where the, on the throttle this rocket uh, will slow us down at, and start slowing down. Now, our marker's starting to wander a little bit, and here's where I'm going to show you how to recover from problems. Oh, our thing's crashed. Okay, now we got a good idea about how far up we are by watching where it exploded, which is an advantage of dropping it this late. However, if you're new to the game, I kind of don't advise doing that, because you may drop it too late and then have a problem. Okay, so yeah, you can see our retrograde uh, marker is wandering pretty hard here, so... What most people's going to try to do when they see that is they're going to try to uh, turn towards it to reel it back in. But, you know, you're still 2,000 meters up. We haven't started seeing the rock start to form, so let's see what we can do here. Now, as you can see, we're uh, it's getting a little hairy. It's wandering all over the nav ball. And uh, it's likely we're gaining, you can see we're starting to get some horizontal movement by watching the ground. We don't want that, so we're just going to go ahead, point ourselves this way, and gain some altitude. We, so we have to abort the first landing. Now that's what you should do should you ever lose control of your horizontal movement in a landing. It's just turn yourself straight up to the top of the nav ball and fire rockets to gain some altitude. Hopefully you brought along enough extra fuel for such potential maneuvers. So, we've got ourselves up a little bit. We're just going to ride it out and slow down, and hopefully our retrograde marker will come back to the center. Ah, there she is. Oh, she's coming in nice. Been watching, keeping our eye on that nav ball. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, this is something we can work with. So we're just going to go ahead and turn towards it, and we're just going to try to reel it in a little bit. You'll notice I'm flicking off the SAS just to uh, make sure that I stay on it and to make sure that I don't have any crazy movement to the ship. And there you go. You can see we've brought our marker back in. Much easier to work with when you uh, don't have a lot of space um, from the ground. When it gets too far away, you just want to raise your altitude a little bit and try again. 
Alright, so it looks like we're doing pretty good here. Now at this point, you can see that it's starting to wander a little more, and we have the RCS control system turned on. Now, what we're going to do is by using the I, J, K, and L keys, we're going to push those keys in the direction that the marker is wandering to reel it back in. Pardon me, I think I'm getting some hiccups. And we're also going to be using the H key to control our descent. Now what we've got here is we've got a sweet spot on our throttle where we're more or less holding speed by either losing it very slowly or gaining it very slowly and we're using the RCS thrusters to add additional thrust to slow us down with um, very fine precision control. What this will allow you to do is it will allow you to make very, very gentle touchdowns. Now I'm hitting in right here because we got going a little bit too slow, a little bit too early, and that will speed us up a little bit. N will thrust the RCS towards the nose of your ship, H will thrust it towards the tail. If you're using the RCS port liner thrusters, it will just thrust in whatever direction they're facing when you press H. Okay, so we're getting close, and we can see our shadow. So let's just go ahead and drop. Normally when I do this maneuver, I'm at a thrust position where I'm actually gaining speed without the RCS. This time I'm using the RCS to lose, sorry, to gain and lose speed. So we're about 5 meters per second, which is a perfect speed to land with. So we're just going to use our RCS to maintain that. And we're also using the I, J, K, and L keys on the RCS control to keep our horizontal movement from drifting too far. Now once you get this close to the surface, don't worry about it. It'll wander, and now we're just going to hold it in until our ship quits wobbling on the surface just to ensure we're planted firmly. And we've killed the RCS and the ASAS. Okay, so it looks like we're good here. And, oh look, there's Kerbin! Got a lovely view here. And these extra fuel tanks I brought along, I kind of intended they'd be dropped before we landed in the original design. Didn't work out so well. Anyway, let's go ahead and EVA. You can do it by clicking the crew hatch or by clicking the EVA on your crew portrait. And we'll just climb down the ladder. Now, we're going to have to let go right here. Uh, and Jeb's going to take a little bit of a fall. Oh, so we got caught in the rocket. Let's see if we can get our rocket pack out. Okay, looks like we got it going. Oh, fell down. Oh, he banged his head a little bit, but it's okay. He's a tough son of a bitch. He can take it. So we'll just go ahead and get back up. Now, I want to teach you a little bit about the EVA controls while we're on the MUN. First thing with EVA, they don't work on the planet Kerbin. You can use it, but it ain't going anywhere. There's too much gravity. So you press Shift to go up, Control to go down, Shift to go back up again, and you want to make sure that you land very gently, otherwise that happens. If you fall, just press W, A, S, or D to walk around, and you'll get back up. You can press Space to jump. And if you hold in uh, space or shift or anything, you can get a little bit of uh, EVA control pack going on here. So let's go ahead, walk around, enjoy it. You can press W to go forward, shift going up again. Um, a and D will turn you left and right. Rotating the mouse will rotate your Kerbin and also use the controls to rotate you. So pretty simple controls. It's actually a lot easier to use the EVA packs thrusters than it is to use the RCS on your ship. So let's just enjoy this for a moment, flying around, and uh, let's go back to the ship now. Let's see if we can fly back to that ladder, since our fuel tanks are in the way of the ladder to climb us up, and somehow we lost a section of it in the journey. Still not sure how that happened. Okay, gently approach it. And you should get a cue to grab the ladder with the key F. There we go, we've grabbed the ladder, we'll climb back up and press F to board. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to want to go home. But first, uh, I'll show you how to extend the ladder. You can just right-click on it and get the extend option. Just watch this. This thing is cool. Drops the ladder down. I love watching it retract. The ladder folds back in. This little arm will fold in and grab it. Pull the ladder out and drag it back into the ship, and the door closes. That is awesome. I love little things like that, just little details. Oh, that's a beautiful screenshot. Let's press F2 to turn off our HUD and press F1 to take a screenshot. You need to commemorate your first MUN landing after all, don't you? 
So, now that you're a Kerbal Hero for landing on the Mon, you might want to go back home so you can get your parade, or whatever they do on Kerbin. So, go ahead and we'll achieve orbit around the Mon. Now, orbit isn't entirely necessary to get home, I just like to do it. As long as you can extend the apoapsis out towards Kerbin, enough to where Kerbin will catch it, and put you into Kerbin's orbit instead of the Mon's, you'll be fine. But we're going to go ahead and take off from the Mon and achieve orbit. It's more or less exactly like orbiting Kerbin, except the atmosphere is a lot lower than it is on Kerbin, because there's pretty much no atmosphere on the Mon at all. So we're just going to go ahead and start tilting our ship over. At which point I really don't need to explain what I'm doing, as I did cover how to achieve orbit in a previous video. So you can just go ahead and watch, and I'll shut up for a little bit. Now I know that my orbital practices of getting into orbit from the Mun are not the best in the world, but um, if anybody has any uh, suggestions on how to be a more efficient uh, lunar orbiter from uh, taking off from the Mun or surface, leave something in the comments. Any advice that makes me a better pilot is always welcome. Alright, so it looks like we're uh, getting out there. We've already started burning our ship towards the horizon. <laughs> And our apoapsis is a bit, actually a lot higher than necessary, but that's fine. The higher up you are, the easier it is to make uh, maneuvers. And plus, we brought along all that extra fuel anyway. Might as well use as much of it as we can. So we're just going to go ahead and get ourselves into an orbit. I like to switch to my ship once in a while just to see what it's doing when I'm doing this. Not really necessary. Okay, it's looking good. Looking good. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and skip around to the back of the MUN once we get our orbit. Okay, so we are behind the MUN now. Let's go ahead and just turn our ship prograde and extend our apoapsis out here so it goes straight for Kerbin. I'm not entirely sure if this is the most efficient way to get to Kerbin and the most efficient place to burn, but it seems to be the most logical. The only problems I've ever encountered by burning here with extending my apoapsis straight towards Kerbin is sometimes the orbit I get around Kerbin when we, do, when we transfer will sometimes cause me to encounter the Mun again. If that's the case, uh, you know, just try to uh, bring the orbit in a little bit more or change it by turning the other way and until you can get it to where you can achieve an orbit that doesn't put you around the MUN. Just try to fix it. Or if you do end up going around the MUN again, just get into another MUN or orbit and try again. A little extra fuel always helps. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get to our apoapsis and... We'll start reeling it in, and we'll edit forward to skip this boring part to where we're re-entering the atmosphere. Okay, so we've brought down our periapsis to inside Kerbin's atmosphere. We're going to go ahead and separate the stages on the ship. Now, I kept the RCS away from the thrusters just in case we ran out of fuel, so that I could use the RCS control to bring our periapsis in on the planet, which is... a Great maneuver. Alright, so we've got everything separated, and we'll just ride it on out. This has been Hooch Cow. You all have a great day, and work at being better pilots. If you've made any awesome moon landings, please feel free to um, share a link to your videos in the description. I'd love to see them.